Okay, good morning, you guys. Today is Monday. It is August, August 3rd. Um, so we are officially starting our academic instruction today. Um, I have posted your assignments on Google Classroom, but we are going to use this video to do all of your guided practice. I'm going to read your directions to you. And I need you to pay very close attention to which resources we're using because we are going to do two pages every day from your math. Ignore my, my one nail is missing. Ah. Volume one. But we're also going to be doing two pages from homework and remembering. Okay. Now, if you were in my class last year, you probably already have a strong understanding of the difference of these two books. But it's important that you are ensuring you're grabbing the correct resource. So we're starting with the volume one. We'll end with homework and remembering. Sort of like if we were in school, this is the book that we would do our schoolwork out of. And then our homework remembering, we would do our homework out of. Okay. So volume one, we're going to start with page six. But I just want to quickly look at the table of contents with you. We are going to be learning about multiplication and division for Unit 1. We'll take um, all of this trimester to go through Unit 1, pretty much. And today we're going to start with multiplying by 5. This is a parent letter that you can give to your parents. This lets them know what it is that we are going to be reading about, or rather what we're going to be learning about. So if I was you, I would go ahead and I would tear this out and hand that to your parents. Um, and this goes over exactly what we're doing with multiplication, okay? If you are a Spanish speaker, here's your Spanish. You can tear this out and give that to your family members because again, this goes over what we're learning about this year, okay? Um, page five, this is going to be pretty much the lesson that we're going to be doing today in class. So you can, if you're watching this prior to our Zoom class, you can observe it, but then just turn the page. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to be looking at our actual assignment. And our assignment in this book is going to be page six and page seven. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, reading and demonstrating. You're going to complete the rest, okay? So I would ask you to read your vocabulary words after me. Equation, multiplication, factor, product. Okay, so these are our vocabulary words for today that we're using. We're going to practice multiplying with fives. Now, we have to ask ourselves first, what in the world is a multiplication? We know what an equation is. We learned this vocabulary word last year. An equation shows the two quantities or expressions, shows that two quantities or expressions are equal. An equal sign is used to show the two sides are equal. In a multiplication equation, the numbers you multiply are called factors. The answer or total is the product. So when we see a multiplication sign, we say times. Three times five equals 15. So three and five are your factors. If this was an addition problem, these would be called add-ins, right? So there's always a name for each one of these numbers. In a multiplication problem, we have factors. Um, and your answer is the product. In an addition problem, your answer is called the sum, right? We all know that. Okay, good. So let's keep going. It says the symbols X, the little asterisk that we see, kind of like a star, or a dot, all mean to multiply. So these questions, these equations down below, they all mean the same thing. Now you each have a highlighter in your bag, so you can highlight. Your new operation is multiplication. Okay? Now, multiplication is simply an easier way of adding a lot of the same numbers together. So we look at number one and we say, and it's basically also just skip counting, guys. All right, so we say four times five, four times five, that's how we read this. Number two, we read this seven times five. Okay, you can see we're working with the fives, our factors, and number one are four and five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 
four times the number five. I'm going to add together four times the number five. So four times five is five plus five plus five plus five. I'm skip counting. Five, 10, 15, and then what? 20. Okay. So I'd like for you to do number two alone. Now, of course, you guys, if you don't need my work or my assistance, you can just fast forward to the next um, subject area, okay? All right. Your directions for the next section say write fives, write the fives additions to show each multiplication. So six times five. So I'm gonna add five six times, okay? So I'm gonna go five plus five plus five plus five plus five. Plus five. How many times have I done it? One, two, six. And just like I did as a rule, please count out how many you have. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then put your um, product on the other side of the equal sign. Okay. Five through ten wants you to just take what we've done with one through four and do it a little bit faster. Now, if you need to use your whiteboard, this is a great time to do that. Maybe you need to write out your fives eight times. If you do, that's okay. Use your whiteboard. That's what it's there for. Or if you want to use your fingers. So I know that 8 times 5, I'm going to add 5 together 8 times. So 5, 10, 15, ah, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. All right. So with number 5, my product is 40. You're going to do the same with 6 through 10. Okay, now at the bottom it says write fives as a multiplication equation for each picture. So I know that I'm writing a multiplication problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sign, which is the X, or you can do a dot or an asterisk. Now my factors are, there are one, two, three, four, five stars in the circle. So I'm going to put my factor as five. And my other factor is going to be however many circles or groups I have. One, two, three, four. 4 times 5. Now, if you want to go and be even um, more motivated with your work, then you could actually write it out as a full equation as well. So you could go 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. And if you want to solve it, that's even better. Okay? All right, there we go. Your next assignment in this book is, and this is going to be the, kind of the same formula every day, you guys, is you're going to do um, two math pages in both of your books. So here, uh, you might have heard me actually say that with number 11 and 12 you're working with. Equal groups. Everybody say it. Equal groups. Okay, let's explore the equal groups. You can use multiplication to find the total when you have equal groups. So 2 times 5 is just 2 groups of 5, or 2 nests with 5 eggs. So how many eggs are there total? 5 plus 5 is 10, or 2 times 5 is 10, because I say 5, 10. Okay, so for the next one, I'm only going to do number 1. It says write multiplication equations. Write a multiplication equation to find the total number. How many bananas? Okay, there's one, two, three, four groups, right? So I'm going to write four. There's four groups of what? How many bananas are in each? Three. Four times three. By the way, if you write three times four, you're still correct, you guys. Okay? It's sort of like addition, where we can mix the factors up and still have the right product. All right, so I'm done with my volume one workbook. Now I'm going to get my very, pay very close attention, homework and remembering, homework and remembering, okay? So with homework and remembering, you're gonna do pages two and three. Uh, it would be a great idea to practice your fives times tables here, but again, it's just skip counting by fives, which we're really good at. All right, so I'm gonna come to page two. And I am going to write out the work at the bottom. Now, what's nice is this actually gives you the answers down below, but I want to see your work. I'm not really concerned so much about you putting the correct product, though that's important. I want to see you do the work. So 8 times 5 means I'm going to add 8 times 5. So I'm going to go 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 
plus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to add them together. Now look, remember how we did last year? We did a lot of groups. So I know that 5 and 5 is a double. That gives me 10, right? So I could just go like this, couldn't I? And then I could skip count again. 10, 20, 30, 40. Number 1, 8 times 5 is 40. And I can look down at the bottom and it does show me that I am correct. But I want to see the work on this. I don't just want to see your product. Okay, boys and girls? Okay. Um, if you want to fill out your study plan, you can do that. So I will work in a quiet space. Um, and then you can get mom to sign. Mom will help you work in a quiet space. Maybe you're getting your brother or sister to help you. Maybe you're going to turn some music on while you're doing your math. Whatever works for you, okay? All right, now it says write each total. So 2 times 5, kind of what's nice is they already have, have written out your equation. So you can do 2 times 5 equals 5 plus 5, and I know that 5 plus 5 is 10. Down at the bottom, it says write the five's additions to show each multiplication and then write the total. So three times five, I love how they circle the five factor just so it's a little less confusing. So I know that I am adding five three times, right? So I'm gonna go five plus five plus five, five, 10, 15 is my product. If you wanna get even better and really train your brain is my product and put a period and you can write that every time all right just so it really gets ingrained in you okay if you have any remaining time in your 45 minutes I would like for you to go to IXL math IXL math and spend some time on IXL math today please okay your next assignment is in your reading workbook you are going to be reading a page out of your reading textbook um, I need I don't have my textbook with me, so you guys are going to have to help me with the page number when we get into our Zoom class. But at any rate, this is, you're going to do some language arts out of this as well, but your tre California Treasures Practice Workbook Grade 3 correlates or goes with your reading, okay? We will do a few pages out of this every day, so I'm asking that we're going to be completing pages 9 to 12, but just really quickly so you can see our table of contents. We are doing first day jitters. And if you were in my class last year, we actually read this. Um, I read it to you, and this year you guys are going to read it yourselves, okay? So we're going to do nine pages, nine to 12, right here, all of those. We're going to go over phonics, short vowels, vocabulary, comprehension for character, setting, and plot, and a story map. Actually, I don't think we are doing the story map. No, we're not. We're just doing nine through 11, okay? All right, so I can update that actually on your slide. Sorry guys, there we go. Okay, all right, so page nine, here's where we start, and I'm gonna use my highlighter with this too. It says a short, the short vowel sounds are the vowel sounds that the letters A, E, I, O, and U stand for in the following words. See, they don't end in E's, right? So pack, p -a -a st -ep, Eh, eh, pick, p -ick, ick, sock, sock, uh, uh, truck, tr uh, 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 okay, and I've highlighted all of my short vowels there. So no, your directions say to fill in the blank in each word below with a vowel letter. You should make a word with a short vowel sound that makes sense, makes sense in the sentence, okay? So please blank to the rear of the bus. Now, Short O could make the word stop, but would it make sense to write, please stop, to the rear of the bus? No. So what other vowel could I use? Okay, please step, step to the rear of the bus. Does that make sense? Yes. So I fill in an E. I'll do number two with you, but you're going to do the rest alone, okay? It says, our new baby sleeps in a crab. Okay, now if I put A here, that would be crab. That would be a word, but would it make sense? Our baby sleeps in a, a crab? No, babies don't sleep in a crab. But our new baby sleeps in a crib, crib, I, right? That's where the baby sleeps. We know that. Okay, so 
we're going to add an eye. All right, if you want to draw little pictures to go with each one of these, you can do that. There's my little baby. All right. <laughs> okay. Page 10, you're going to work on your vocabulary. This is where you are going to need to use your textbook. You can use the glossary in the back, or you can use the page that we're supposed to read together. Uh, we will be reading our vocabulary page together tomorrow, and I will give you the vocabulary page when we're in class. All right? But I will help you with, I'm going to start with number one down. It says, use the clues to complete the following crossword puzzle, right? So number, actually, let's read your vocabulary words together. So say your words after me. Trudged. Fumbled. Nonsense. Downstairs. Nervous chuckled okay it says number one down which is here is going to be afraid or worried so to be afraid or worried and some of you already know this emotion is nervous all right so that's the first clue to filling in the rest of your crossword and of course your letters should um, match the letters and other words when they cross each other. That's the whole point of a cross word, right? Okay, page 11. This is the last page we're doing in this book. We are reading about characters, plot, and setting. Last year, you guys learned about characters and setting. So the new word this year is plot. All right. The characters, we know this, are the people or animals in a story. The plot includes the important events that happen in the beginning, the middle, and end. So when you did your Raz Kids retell on Friday, that's what you should have given me was the plot. Important events in the beginning, middle, and end. The setting is when and where the story happens. We already know this from second grade. So your directions say read the story and then answer the questions below. I'm going to read only the first paragraph, and I'm going to answer number one for you. At 9 a.m. on his first day of work at the supermarket, Josh was given shopping cart duty. It was cold out. Josh did not want this task, but he was a good worker. So, when does the story take place? It takes place in the morning. You don't have to do complete sentences right now. That may change later in the morning. All right, so now you're gonna do the rest of the questions on your own. Number, I'll read the questions to you. If you don't need it, just skip over in the video. Number two, where does this story take place? Number three, who is the main character in this story and how can you tell? Number four, what is the important event in this story? And number five, what is the last, oh, I'm sorry, what is the first important event in this story? Number five, what is the last important event in this story? You can also highlight where you found the answers, which I should have done with number one. It says at 9 a.m. in the morning. It also says on the first day of work. I could add that to my answer if I wanted. Okay, so I'm done with reading. Good job. Now I'm coming to writing. Okay, you have a notebook in your bag. It has a label at the top. This is your writing notebook. Please take a crayon and you can write the word, or if you've got markers at home too, that's fine, but I'm going to use my crayon. Write the word. Writing. I did a cursive G. If you want to make it cute, make it cute. For right now, I'm not going to worry about making mine cute. I'm just going to go into my first page. When you're in your writing notebook, folks, you need to make sure you are going in order. You're not skipping pages. I'm going to my very first page because we're going to be using this all year long, okay? So I would like for you to copy the following prompt. What are my goals for this? year okay notice I say inside the pink lines when I do this all right now 
the part that we do in the center of the page, I don't want you to get worried about if you don't do a perfect square or circle because that's not the point. We are not in art class, and even in art class, you shouldn't be doing anything perfect. Um, the point is to get your thoughts and your ideas down. So we are in our pre-writing. which is what we do before we get to the actual writing process. This is where we're going to get our ideas down. So always your pre-writing, you're going to have a, and my circle is imperfect, but that's okay. You're going to have your main idea in the center. You're going to do three details. And you want to make these relatively big circles so you can get some information in them, okay? And you're going to do your last circle is going to be your conclusion, which we took, we worked on this last year, okay? So none of mine is perfect. Yours shouldn't be perfect either. And I'm, um, I know I'm demonstrating with a pen. That's so it's easier for you guys to see in your video, but you should be using a pencil. All right, it says, what are my goals for this year? So my main idea sentence is going to say, I have a few goals or a lot of goals, or many goals. I have a few goals for this year. All right, now you don't have to do complete sentences with any of the rest of these, all right? So what are my goals? I want to, my goals are definitely to stay on schedule. All right, I need to make my goals a little bit different than yours, otherwise you're gonna be tempted to copy, right? So I want, but you can copy. We are doing this first writing. If you want to use my example as a way to copy, I'm okay with that. And then we can move away from copying after our first paper. So if you need to copy me, that's okay. Um, my goal this year is to stay on schedule daily to learn new things. As a teacher, I'm going to learn a lot of new things. I've already learned a lot of new technology. Um, and to try to have fun. It's not probably going to be as fun as it normally is when we're in class, but we can try, right? Okay, and then in your last bubble, you're using that to bring all of your ideas together, okay? So stay on schedule comma, learn new things, comma, and have fun. All right, so then what I want you to do is I want you to get your crayons. All right, you're going to put a green outline around your main idea, all right? This means green means go, it's our main idea. I want you to use a yellow around what we call your details. Your details are your three bubbles that explain your main idea. We're going to slow down and really talk about these and, or really write about these in our writing, okay? So this is, those are my three that I should color in yellow. And my last bubble, I'm going to outline it in red. Kind of like, it's telling me to stop, just like a light, just like a traffic light. So I know I'm going to stop here because this is my concluding sentence. That's going to be my concluding sentence and my concluding paragraph. All right, that's all you have to do for writing today. If you want to copy my ideas, that's okay. If you have your own ideas, that's even better. All right, so maybe try to make it a goal to um, only copy two of my ideas and come up with your own one idea. Or only copy one of my ideas to come up with your two. And if you're a superstar, you're going to come up with your own three ideas. Okay? All right, we're done with writing for the day. Now we are going to language arts, so we're going to come back to your reading workbook page, page um, 18. All right, so we're going to page 18. We're going to look at statements and questions, and we will use these in our writing, you guys, okay? So um, 
we probably know the difference between a statement and a question, but we are going to explore that more or practice with it. So it says a statement is a sentence that tells something and it ends with a period. That's important. Ends with a period. A question is a sentence that asks something. Hello. It ends in a question mark. Statement. There are many ways to make new friends. I'm going to highlight that period. Question. What do you do to make good friends? Question. All right. I bet you can imagine what the directions will be. Write a statement if the sentence tells us something. Write a question if the sentence asks something. Put the correct end mark at the end of the sentence. So you have to do two things, you guys. You have to put the correct end mark at the end of the sentence, and you have to write statement or question. So I'll do two, three, one, two, and three with you. Meg liked to make new friends. That's a statement. I'm going to put a period, and then I'm going to write the word statement. Number two, she said hello to the new student. That's another statement. Number three, how would you greet a new student? How gives me a question. Got it? All right, you're going to do the same thing with four through 14. All right, language arts. Page 19, we're only going to do paragraph 1, okay? Only paragraph 1. So the top says, and you can read it with me, a sentence is a group of words that tells a complete thought. That's important. A statement is a sentence that tells something. A question is a sentence that asks something. So it says, read the description of Carly's first day at camp circle the mistakes and rewrite the paragraph or you can highlight the mistakes. So it says, number one, I woke up early. That should be a sentence. Good. It was the first day of camp. That should be a sentence or a statement, but we need to capitalize the I there, right? I didn't know what to expect. Would I know anyone in my group? Oops, that's a question. Would we do things I like to do? That's good. Would we swim in the lake or the pool? That's good. I've never gone swimming outside before. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate only up to the word it. So I'm gonna rewrite, and you need to make sure you indent. I woke up early, period, capital I. It was the, and you're gonna keep going, making all the corrections that you need to, all right? So that's all you're doing with language arts. Now we have science. You're going to complete. All right, now you have two different science books, you guys. So please, and they look very, very similar. So make sure you're grabbing interactive study guide, okay? We're going to do interactive study guide pages two and three. And just so you know, looking at our table of contents, we are learning about energy first. All right, so lots of vocabulary today, you guys, but tomorrow you get to watch a video on this. Lesson one, you're going to read your um, lesson. You're going to read your vocabulary, read each section. You're going to answer the questions on page three. I'm going to help you do number one. You're going to do the rest alone. Okay, your vocabulary says energy. Energy is the ability to work, to make things move, stretch or grow and to cause physical and chemical reactions. Stored energy is energy that can change into a form that can do work. All right, now each section is divided into different headings. What is energy? Stored energy, energy stored in batteries, energy from fuel, energy from food. So I'm going to preview what my question one is. What is energy? Energy is the ability to do. Now, if you were my class last year, you know that the answers are right there. All you have to do is look at the previous page. So energy is the ability to, and I would like for you to color or highlight where you found the answer. 
Energy is the ability to do, look at that, it's right there, work. Again, I'm putting my answers in pen, but you should be using pencil, okay? I'm only using pen so you can see better. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy makes things blank, blank, and blank. We should be able to find that answer exactly. To make things move, stretch, and or grow. So I'm going to color those, and then I'm going to write them. Move, stretch, go. Alright, so you're going to do the same thing for the rest of the page, just knowing that the answers are literally right there. Okay, and your last assignment for today is in your social studies workbook. You're going to read and answer all the questions on 85 through 87. We're really excited to introduce this unit to you because it's going over, um, we're going to be going over elections and we're going to ready to have a big election. Okay, so you're going to be, at the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to answer the question, how do rules and laws help people live together? We are in unit four, so this, uh, when we do our social studies lesson, I think on Thursday, we'll go over all of this together, okay, you guys, because this is very important. Okay, now, it says, how do rules and laws help people live together? So, you are going to need to answer the questions on these pages. You're reading 85 the page number 85 to 87 but you need to notate or really look and see that there are questions you need to answer with the vocabulary with your cause effect and these are the big ones you guys number one it says cause and effect use details in the text to complete the chart below the national government makes laws and what is the effect all right, so I'm going to help you do this one, but you have to do the rest alone. Cause and effect. Use details in the text to complete the chart. Laws in the Constitution. The United States Constitution explains the powers of the national government. Only the national government can make laws for our nation. Laws protect citizens or members of the community. So the national government makes laws. The effect is that the laws protect citizens and the good thing is is when we feel like a law doesn't protect us then we can um, we can use our right to vote to help change those laws right you guys and that's very important lots of stuff around that going on in our country um, these days you can also highlight where you found the answer laws protect citizens or members of the community that's where I found that answer all right. Okay, so you'll read the rest. You'll answer number two. You'll answer number three. You'll answer number four. And then you can stop there. Okay? All right, you guys. So I believe that's it for the day. It is. Uh, you should be doing your work for about three hours and five minutes. Um, please make sure you, get, you do something outside. Get yourself outside today at some point. Please make sure that you do something around the house to help your family members. Just one thing. And please make sure you're kind to your brothers and sisters. I'll see you at our Zoom. Bye.